Good afternoon, my name is Brandon Levitt. I'm the seed manager for Harvest Land Co-op. Hi, I'm Haley Jones. I'm the grain originator for Harvest Land. I'm Drake Copeland. I'm a tech service rep with the FMC. Yep, and we're here. I appreciate you guys coming. We're here to talk to you guys today a little bit today about a high yield wheat and some opportunities that we have around wheat to uh, hopefully at the end of the day um, add profitability to your operations. So Drake, talk to us a little bit about uh, variety selection as, as growers are looking to purchase wheat for next year's crop. Yeah, I think just with any crop, you should treat wheat as you would another one. So uh, one thing that you can control from a variety selection standpoint is that head scab tolerance. Um, it goes a long way. Um, yes, we can spray fungicides later and we'll get to that, but that's where we need to start is having a variety that's good for your dirt and good for your region. Yeah, yeah. So variety selection, yeah, we've got several varieties selected here for Harvest Land's ge ge geography from the Cropland brand that, um, they, you know, they are designed for our soil types. They're widely adapted varieties that we, uh, we utilize in our uh, geography. So some of the other things that I look at, Drake, is I look at seeding rate. We need to be planting uh, seeding rate of these uh, this wheat somewhere around 1.5 million seeds per acre. Uh, we start falling below that. We do lose some yield potential, so we want to do that. We've got to start with a really good fertility program, and obviously Yield Pro is a way to do that, um, but we need to make sure we've got the right P and K and pH levels in our fields to uh, maximize production if we want to grow high yield wheat. Um, and another thing that I look at is we've got to have uh, 30 pounds of nitrogen in the fall. So we utilize uh, some straight rate fertilizers on a lot of wheat applications to make sure we fulfill that 30 pounds of nitrogen in the fall. So. Drake, talk to me a little bit, you know, coming out of fall, you know, we've done a good job of getting the, the, the variety selected. We've got them planted. We planted them at 1.5. We put our 30 pounds of nitrogen on. We got the right P and K levels, all that stuff. Talk to me a little bit about what we need to do and look at as we come out of, uh, out of the winter months and we start to get greened up plants. Yeah, so at green up stage, that's when we start thinking about, all right, I need weed control. Um, so a lot of your herbicides, they have 50 degrees on the label. Um, that's something where we've got to get the plant actively growing to put that herbicide where it needs to be to control that weed. Um, and then there's other opportunities to put other things in the tank. One thing that's pretty common in high yielding wheat is a foliar fungicide at that green up stage. And what that does is protects the vegetation all the way up until we get to that flag leaf timing or that or that flowering timing where you really especially in this area you've got to consider a head scab application that way you can have like we mentioned earlier a good variety that has tolerance but we can take it to the next level with that fungicide application at flowering or at the end of flowering and provide that control that way we don't have to worry about the toxins as much when it gets into the grain bin. There you go, there you go. Drake, is there any opportunity from an insect control standpoint as well? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So one thing that's pretty common is barley yellow, yellow dwarf virus and that's transmitted from aphids. So that's something that we can take care of at that green up timing too by putting an effective pyrethroid in that application as well. Um, other problems like now that this is an army worm year so maybe when it gets towards the end of the year and you've got yield to protect at this point, if armyworms are bad enough to where they're clipping heads or taking away vegetation that could be increasing our yields, we want to take care of those as well. Awesome. Good. Yeah, I think uh, when we look at growing high yield wheat, um, I think it's no different than what we're doing when we're growing high yield corn and soybeans in our geography is anything that we can do to take uh, any, any, mitigate any stress in this crop anything that's going to detract from yield. If we can set ourselves up to take those out of the equation, uh, we're going to see a lot higher yielding wheat products. So I do appreciate that. Haley, talk to me a little bit about the opportunities that we have here at Harvest Land Co-op from a grain marketing standpoint with wheat. Yeah, absolutely. So probably the biggest resource you should be taking advantage of is through Harvest Land's grain department, we have a wheat premium program. Um, and with that program, it's just you have to follow guidelines that you guys have set out later or said earlier. Yep. Um, and that is outlined within the contract. And with that, you just have to deliver to a specific Harvest Land co-op. Um, and those locations vary from 25 to 40% 40 40 premium. 
Yes. <laughs> and then if you follow those guidelines, there's the 25 to 40 cent premium, um, depending on the location that you have. New to this year, um, we're going to be adding the El Dorado and Verona locations to that program. And then if you're interested in this program, just reach out to your local Yield Pro Specialist. Yes. Thank you, Haley. Very good job. So I do appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to visit with me. I do appreciate you guys that are watching the video for taking a little time to listen to us. Um, if you've got questions, Haley, you did a nice job, but we need to make sure we get a hold of our Yield Pro specialists, visit with them, and they can always get you in contact with our grain department to, to visit with you as well. So thank you very much, and have a happy and safe uh, wheat harvest.